Well, I've been staring at this one. Picked up a little bit of steel, which is like really expensive now. Crazy. Don't know what it is like for you folks in the States, but you're looking at about $70 worth of steel there. And that's just seven feet of 125 wall 2x4 and some similar strapping 2 inch. Not cool. Anyways. The plan is to make some supports off the frame. Uh, I kind of want it to sit on top of the frame, but half off the frame just for some extra strength. So I was going to do that. We need four supports up in the front. And then back here, it pretty much sits on the frame. Just got to make some shims or something for it, and then she should be golden. So, yeah, that's the plan. Now, I'm not sure if I'm getting to that right now or not, but, but we'll see. The other one I was staring at was, yeah, the engine bay. I'm kind of thinking, like, you know, the motor's pretty low in here, looking like it should come up, but I almost dig it that it sits lower, because I think it's gonna just about clear the heater blocks, like there'll be very minimal change I'll need to do. And then uh, up in the front, if I leave it low, I can come back. I might mount the rat a little lower, but should work still with the mechanical fan, all that jazz. We might go with a smaller intercooler and then that way we can still fit an AC condenser in there somehow. So um, you might pick up an intercooler like I put on uh, my big truck there. We'll see. We'll see what he wants to do. If we run the Dodge one, it's going to like come way the heck out here and there's going to be a whole lot of cutting up of this uh, front apron. You'd have to anyways, but I think it would be like excessive amounts of cutting. So, so we got the... Uh, we pulled the body off last night, and then uh, the kid pulled the motor out today. Pulled the motor out, I think he stripped the fuel tank, stripped everything out of the, the truck. And uh, he's working on blasting the frame now. So he's got a few bags of sand, and then we'll see how far he gets with it. I think he's got a few more again. I can't say I don't enjoy it, but he's kind of plugging away at her, so. Let's see how far he gets. He sort of blasted everything. <laughs> I think he realized it doesn't work as fast as he wanted. But I think he's going to do some kind of an arrest treatment on it or something. Um, so I haven't really done a whole lot. He's been mucking around with everything. I'm going to probably try to clean this up a bit. I think what I'm going to try to do tonight is move the motor mounts back. That's my goal. I might try to do this notch. I did the same one on my truck, kept the power steering. So I kind of had to step this all down to fit it. So I might do the initial cut and then I'll figure out, hopefully it fits. I'll let him put the motor in and see. Anyways, I'm gonna just start by cutting the old mounts off and I wanna move them back. I might lift them up an inch, I'm not sure. Cause where this one's gonna go, I might just put it level up with the top of the frame. So I might build this one up. Uh, it doesn't need it, but I'm just gonna give it a little bit of lift. Make a feller's life a little bit easier with the rad and stuff like that after. Anyways, let's get started.
Okay, so I got the motor mounts. I got the motor mounts moved back five and a quarter inches, so that'll put the, uh, that's gonna put this pretty darn close to the firewall. There may have to be a little bit of massaging, but. And then I raised it up about an inch. So, not that I needed it, but. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna step this out for the air conditioning, because now that this is five inches back, I pretty much have to notch this section out and then box this in and it should be good basically what i'll do is i'll yeah i'll kind of run with it i'll blow it out i'll let the kid i'll tack it in and uh i'll let the kid try to fit the motor tomorrow see if it fits i think he's in the same boat as me as far as uh you may not have air conditioning right now but the option is going to be there to put it in and we don't have to pull the motor out and do all that so I'm going to take the plasma and I'm just going to blast this out to this section. If I go back to five inches, I've raised it up so I might not have to go that low, but I'm just going to do it anyways. But from the back of here, well, we don't know. Like, I don't think I had to go all the way through that cross member. I think I left some of it. So I'm kind of going to do that. I'm going to leave just a wee bit of the pocket on there. Because it seems to be about the same amount this motor moved back that mine and my truck did. Anyways, I'm just going to blindly cut this and I'll get him to fit it tomorrow, see if it works. If it does, then uh, I'll cut up some box plate for him and he can tack her in. Okay, well, we got that cut out, and that looks like quite a, a gaping hole, and uh, quite frankly, that, that is a big gaping hole. <laughs> but uh, we're going to box it all up, and uh, well, with any luck, his, uh, what do you call it, AC pump's going to fit in there, so I'm going to make a plate. I'm going to make a plate, basically, that goes in here, comes into the frame, you know, behind here. So I'll get buzzed in, uh, buzzed into here, buzzed around here. There'll be a second plate coming up there. And then uh, there'll be a plate on the inside. So this one's gonna come up to the inside again. This one will go up. It's like a cool Lego. So I'm gonna make them, I'm gonna tack them in and then I'll let the kid weld everything up solid. And then uh, he should be golden for his uh, AC pump.
Okey doke. Well, I just spent way too long cleaning up my workbench, but uh, I think what I'm going to do is I got these square body pedals. I'm not sure where else we're ever going to use them again, so I'm thinking I am going to try and figure out if I can mock this thing up to work with a slave cylinder that's in the uh, that's for the the Cummins setup with the NV4500. This is for a mechanical style. So this had the rod that pushed down into the floor. And then it had this funky spring up here. Um, yeah. I'm pretty much going to mock this up that this is the firewall. It's kind of my idea. And I'm going to see where what uh, will work. I just got to grab that slave cylinder, the junk one, out of the parts truck, the donor. And... Uh, then we'll start daddling and see how it fits. So I kind of been daddling and the swing is not crazy. <clears throat> like when it swings, well, how far do you got to go, right? But uh, when you put the stock Dodge master or the stock Dodge slave cylinder on it, it, uh, well, master, that's master. <laughs> uh, it kind of fits around where the spring was. And then the transition is not crazy, like you're not putting any weird side load, like it should be going dead nuts straight in and out, but it's, uh, there's a little bit of a transition, but nothing crazy. I don't think it'll bugger up the master, so. Uh, and then it puts it, whatever it is, about three to four inches over from the lower bolt hole, which does work out. It's a route where the original Speedo cable comes out on the firewall, but I will have to make a beefier plate instead of the sheet metal firewall for this to sit in. Um, for kicks and giggles though, because we got to take the pedal assembly out anyways, I'm just going to pull the one out of that Dodge chassis because it does have a nice assembly and it has the nice plunk where this thing will fit in, where this squeezes in nicely. So I'm going to pull that one out. I got to pull the pedals out of that truck anyways. So I feel I'll try the, the original Dodge assembly and if it can work in the truck with the steering column and all that jazz mint, because I do recall in my, in the general there, when I did it, it lined up not too bad with the original steering column on the GM. Uh, but I did have it sticking through the dash a lot more. So for the little bit of effort to pull it out and see, eh, we'll find out. And so I'm kind of in the midst of pulling this out. Kind of just smashed everything out of the way that I don't need. Um, we're just going in here. I think it's some 15s and a whole bunch of 10 millimeters. I'm going to drop the steering column out and uh, grab this pedal assembly. Whether it'll work or not, I don't know, but I'll pull it out, throw it on the shelf anyways. Then the master's sitting there too, and it's hydro, hydro boost, so worst case, I can always make this work for something else, so. And well, because a feller is here, and you see some relays, a guy should be grabbing them, right? You never know when you need a relay. Okay, I have the body just roughly sitting back onto the uh, chassis here that he's kind of got half undercoated. Uh, I'm just going to be pull the pedals tonight. Not sure how much more I'll get done. That and I'm kind of doing just a close fit. Turbo is not terrible, but I think it's got to go back a hair. Like it's it's fitting in the mounts, but I think it's just a hair. Got to go, well, forward actually. But looks like it actually clears the heater box, which is super weird. I should try to do a test fit with a rad to see how that goes. Um, because it surprisingly looks like it fits well. <laughs> The motor's like actually pretty low in here, but I don't know. It seems to work out. 
it's not in the way of anything, not a problem, so I don't see a problem with it. Should uh, show my bounty I found, uh, I scored out of the other truck there. So I grabbed the original Dodge pedals. I grabbed the master. We got the gas pedal. I found a bunch of relays. Uh, should have been one more somewhere. Yeah, I had another relay somewhere. Anyways. Okie doke. The original pedal assembly is out. I've modified this one by getting rid of the getting rid of the preloaded spring doodad. That's gone. I should weld a tab on, but for now I'm not gonna muck with it. Uh, I'll loosely sit it in here and see if I can figure out this uh, slave where it's gotta go. The closer up I can go, the better. You know, the easier the clutch will be. Because if I can fit it up there and the swing is not so bad, then uh, it's pretty much gonna be like pushing the clutch in like uh, from a Honda or something. So, should make life easier. Anyways, I'm gonna get that test fit and then I can see where this is actually going to fit on the firewall, and we'll figure it out from there. Figure out the bits I got to make. All right, you can see the slave or the master cylinder up there has nothing to connect to, but I marked the pedal. Oh, my light is bad. Let's try this. So I marked my pedal up here. So I got to make a tab off of there, but I'm not going to go very far. What I'll do is I'll extend the rod to it, and then. Uh, like it has a throw to it, but I don't think it's going to exceed the the slave. I keep saying slave, the master. I might mount it a wee bit lower. That way we just have, it'll have this. Oh, when it goes in, I might mount it a little lower. So as I push the pedal, it's going to kind of keep it in a even swoop. Even-ish. It should be all right. I guess we'll have to see. But I did make a mark, and now I'm making a note to make it a little bit lower. As you can see, that mark does throw quite a bit in its motion. But uh, basically on the inside there, what I did is I took the Speedo cable out, and it looks like the master is going to fit exactly where the Speedo was. Which is not a big deal. We're going to have to come up with a solution anyways, because this is a non-mechanical transfer case and this is a mechanical dash so we'll have to figure something out but anyways this thing's gonna have to go into there to which i'm gonna have to make um, a beefy plate there for this thing to lock into i'm pretty sure i have a design on my plasma table so i can cut something out to which we can bolt onto the firewall to give it a whole lot of extra strength now uh, i'm gonna pull that pedal assembly out I guess for now I'm going to scab that tab off of the uh, the Dodge assembly because I know these ends fit on it, so it saves us the hassle of making something. So I cut the tab off of the Dodge assembly, so this is what I'm going to run my clutch with. Uh, there's the mark I made. So basically all I'm going to do is glue this, well, weld this tab on there and then uh, just a hair under that line. And then uh, we can pretty much slam the truck, or slam this and the column together, and I guess that's maybe as far as I'll get tonight. Not very productive, but something, right? At least that's the way I see it. A little daddling is better than no daddling, right? Cool. So I'm just gonna get the welder set up and give her a quick zap. I think I got it all mocked up. I still gotta put the steering column in, but it's not that late yet. We're just hitting 11 o'clock, so I think I'm just gonna quickly cut this mount, which is a tab I made. When I had a first gen, I had one of the twist lock uh, slave cylinders, and the sucker just blew a hole through the firewall on that particular truck. So I made this 
which is super simple, but the twist lock goes in and then you can bolt it in on top and bottom. So it should work perfect for this application. So, uh, pretty much we've spit that out. Now I am going to uh, set up the plasma quick and at least cut one, maybe two, just to have one hang on the wall. And uh, put the steering column in and call her a night. I think that's the, the plan here. <laughs> Anyways, get back to the truck. We're doing a little bit of work. I want to fit this in tonight. Uh, get that sitting right. I kind of dropped the rad in. I'm mixed on how it fits. Like it fits, but it doesn't fit. So we'll see how this one goes. Yet I might just do the uh, Chevy red. Um, I made a slip cop. Um, I made a slip-in joint that goes inside the steering. So the actual slip yard. Uh, okay, let me phrase this right. The actual slip shaft that goes into the uh, the original GM one is what fits inside of the Dodge shaft. So I made a slug that goes into here. Uh, it's just bolted to sandwich it so this thing can't come apart. I am going to weld this around. I've just made a a note on the fire windshield that when we pull the body off, we're going to weld that. And then, uh, yeah, it just bolts up and she's golden. So that's good. Brake pedal is bolted down. So now what I'm going to work on is uh, the firewall, the clutch slave cylinder. I basically got to open up that hole a little bit and then uh, fit my adapter on there properly. I kind of want to bring this up a little bit, so I'm just going to die grind the top of that out a wee bit more. And uh, I'll fit this in, we'll just do a dry fit, see how how it works with the swing of the pedal there. If she's all golden, then uh, yeah, we'll drill some holes, get that bolted in, and then that section of it's done. Okie doke. So this is kind of stalled a little bit, but I'm going to keep plugging away. I'm not happy the way that slave cylinder is working, so I'm probably going to take that out. And uh, I'm going to take the clutch rod off, and I'm going to move the pivot point, and then extend the rod. And then we'll see. That should fix it. This one sort of kind of hit a standstill. Uh, kind of waiting for the kid to do a bunch of work on it. But he's kind of busy with school right now, so I've done a bunch, but I'm not doing everything on this truck. I'm gonna let him do, like he's doing a lot, a big chunk of the build. I'm doing like what I think is fun to me, stuff. And then uh, he's doing all the tedious things, you know, welding. I'll tack the mounts in, but he's welding them all in, cleaning them up. Uh, like I mounted the pedals and doing that stuff, but He's going to have to cut the hole in the floor yet, or I'll help him once he gets the transmission and stuff attached to it. Uh, but yeah, I'm kind of just slowly just doing little things with it. <clears throat> but I'm not trying to jump too much so he doesn't, he's not involved with any of it. So, but where we're at here is I got the donor truck is outside. I'm going to pull it up. I want to pull the rad cradle out of it or the, the rad support. Because I'm thinking I want to drop the radiator down 
so these hoses all line up so a guy doesn't have to modify anything and run the big big honking dodge rad which is cool so then i'm going to try to do that run the stock condenser i'd like to have that in here with the hoses coming to this side so put it in backwards hopefully that works and then i believe he's going to get an aftermarket intercooler so the plan there is we're just, i just want to pull the grill out see what i got for room i think he's going to run the same one that i have in my uh, in the general there so I'll probably mount that up into the front and then we can pipe that out. So, I don't know, it should all work out. I'll do some of the, you know, just the easy things anyways. Like the rad for me to mount that bottom. Basically, I was gonna gut the GM stuff out. I'll drop this down. We'll reuse the Dodge rad. His is junk, but the one that came out of my donor truck was good. So I'll use it. <clears throat> the front of these trucks is a little weird. So to try to reuse the stock intercooler, it might work but it also then I won't have room for an AC condenser and stuff so and then <clears throat> the stock because this rad sits behind these big supports and if I ran the stock AC condenser you'd pretty much just murder out the whole front structural bracing inside of the the front of this truck so I don't want to do that because I know that motor is going to rattle the beans out of everything so we want to keep everything as strong as we can in there so that's my plan. I'm going to pull the truck up. I'm going to cut the front out. Uh, I'll probably muck around with it a little bit tonight. And then uh, kind of go from there. I just feel like working on a little bit of something different right now. Until he catches up to where we're at. With You know, catches up with a lot of little stuff. Because he's got to get some fuel lines, brake lines, stuff like that. So he wants to run all that first. And then we'll bolt the box down. We'll bolt the cab down. He's still got to do the inner rockers on this side. And, uh, well, inner outer rocker. And then we got to modify, like make a hole for the transmission and stuff. Because this will be an automatic truck, so it'll be like the low hump. It's got nothing there. We're high enough, it shouldn't be a big deal. But anyways, that's kind of where that's at. So I'm just going to go drag the truck up. I'm just going to blindly cut that bottom section of the, the cradle out. And uh, just continue to keep cleaning up a little bit. Kind of my plan. Well, it is just cold enough today that everything's sort of semi-frozen. <clears throat> Gonna do the old shuffle. You gotta bring that one into the shop and pull in the kid's car out of the shop. And, uh... I just need to put some air in the tires in this one. <laughs> Okie doke. Hey yeah, boy. We're gonna do a little bit of shuffle. Well that one's staying for now. This one's coming out. Uh, I'll probably get pushed in over here. I don't know what the kids' schedule is with school and whatnot, so I gotta get the panel on the hoist because I think we got a cracked flex plate on it. So I'm going to pull the uh, transmission tonight and see how that goes. So anyways, this one semi steers, but I'm just going to lift her up with the loader, out the door, bring the panel in, and uh, push this one back in. And then we'll revisit everything tonight. 
Well, we did some shuffling around, or I did some shuffling around. So this one's in, I threw it in behind. We gotta do some work on that delivery. I gotta do, I think we got a bad flex plate or something on it. I think it's a crack flex plate. So we're basically gonna pull the tranny tonight. Have a peek, see, see how bad, what's going on. Uh, this one, eh, I'm waiting for the kid to come. See if he runs some fuel lines and brake lines and stuff like that, at least to the back section. Get a little bit done there before he can get back on the hoist because it's going to be a few days before he can. Probably not till next week. I got a few things coming up. But, uh, yeah. I guess that's uh, where I'm going to leave this one. I think next round is I'm going to try to pull that grill out and try to get that rad all mounted up nice. So anyways, as always guys, thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.